Hi, my name is Brooks Anderson. I'm the president and CEO of Wisdom Window. And we are delighted today to have a special person with us, Lisa Smith. <laughs> Lisa Smith is a speaker, trainer, and marketing consultant for small businesses. She helps build strong customer relationships and lasting loyalties through email and social media marketing. Lisa is founder of 7Touch Marketing, a marketing training and consulting company. As a business owner herself, she understands the unique struggles and triumphs of small businesses. Lisa has trained over 40,000 people across the U.S. to be more successful in business. She developed and, and taught seminars for Franklin Covey. And we just found out today that, that um, we were there at the same time. Didn't know each other, but it's kind of fun to have another Franklin I here. Uh, so she was there for 20 years and has been a featured keynote speaker workshop leader, and one-on-one -on -one coach. She served as marketing director for small manufacturing business in Central Oregon, where she successfully introduced email into their marketing mix. We're delighted to have Lisa with us. Lisa, thank you. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rock Your Social Media Marketing. I'm so excited to have you here. And so let me, uh, Brooks already gave me a great introduction, so here's me. Uh, if you want to contact me, follow me on social media, there's the stuff. Uh, I, in fact, I did spend 20 years with Franklin Covey, and I have um, uh, had this business for three years. Here's what happened. I was marketing director for a small firm in my city, a little tiny town called Sisters Oregon that maybe you've heard of. And, uh, and I was with a small business that had all of their payroll wrapped up in the manufacturing staff and didn't have a dedicated salesperson. And so when they would go to trade shows and spend thousands of dollars on um, uh, the, well, the trade show and on their four color ads in trade journals and in all of the support stuff and marketing stuff, then they had no one to systematically follow up. And I realized a lot of small businesses are in the same situation. So I self-taught email marketing and social media as a way to establish relationships with the people who they had met in person. And then realizing that all small businesses are pretty much in the same spot, even if you have dedicated salespeople, keeping in touch with them on, a, on the, with those leads on a regular basis is a lot of work and it's very time consuming. And so that's why I started 7Touch Marketing. I hope to help small business people to um, uh, build relationships and nurture their leads and grow their business. So let's get into a little bit more. I am also affiliated with Constant Contact. I am a, an authorized local expert with them, and that means they let me teach their seminars. And I absolutely love Constant Contact product. I, I, I have no reser reservations at all representing them in the seminars. Now, this is not a sales seminar, so this is my three minute ad and then we're done. So Constant Contact is best known for email marketing. However, they also have a lot of other platforms. And the cool thing about this is you put in your list once and you can do everything in it. So not only email marketing, but also event management and registration. And also social campaigns on your Facebook page. And the email marketing links to social media as well. You can also, um, um, <laughs> do surveys, that's what I wanted to say. You can do surveys of your clients and other things, again, all in one platform. So I am really excited to share with you today the tips, techniques, and best practices of social media. One of the most important things we need to discuss is, well, here's my agenda. We're going to talk about why I use social media. We're going to talk about what's right for my business. You don't have to be everywhere. Isn't that great news? And what do I do next? So why would you want to use social media? That's the question. So let's see. Show of hands. How many of you are on Facebook? Yeah, almost everybody is on Facebook. And how many of you are on Twitter? OK, some of you. Awesome. How many are on LinkedIn? OK, not quite as many. And Pinterest? Especially if you have a visual business. Okay, so we're talking about business here, not personal. What about Instagram? Awesome. We've got some, some uh, uh, forward-thinking people here. And how many of you are on Google Plus? 
Okay, not nearly as many. So let's, we're going to talk about each of those in turn. We're going to hit on the big ones a little harder than on the less popular ones um, so that you are spending the best time that you can on social, on, on the sites that will result the most, um, give you the most results. Um, another form of social media that people don't think about in that context is, in fact, email marketing. Um, and I will show you why that's still important. But the essence of social media is building relationships. That's the whole point. It's the social of social media. And so email marketing does a fantastic job with that. You can take their contact information and then through your communications on email, they get to know you. And they begin to trust you. And that's what that building relationships and nurturing leads is all about. So that when they're ready to buy, they trust you and they are ready to um, put their money in your hands to provide a service or a product that they need. So, social media marketing. My parents are in their 90s and they are darling. They have a Facebook account. Um, and they keep to asking me, what is this email marketing? They don't get the email thing and they don't really get the social media except every once in a while they log on and try and make a post. They're pretty cute about it. But um, the whole thing, the way I finally ended up describing it to them was, Social media is the new back fence, and it's the new barber shop. Now, if you're 90, that totally resonates with you, right? <laughs> so it's also a coffee shop. It's also a cocktail party. It's also a neighborhood picnic. I mean, all the ways that we have gathered with people and shared information and updated ourselves on our lives, that's what social media does now. And, of course, the one-to-one -one interaction is always best. But when you move away, or you want to keep in touch with your college friends or whatever, it's an awesome way to do that. For business, it leads to new customers. And it leads to repeat business. So if somebody does business with me once, and I continue to nurture them, they are more likely to do business with me again. And referrals. We all know that word of mouth is the most powerful marketing there is, right? But we want to expand that. We don't want to leave our marketing in the hands of our former customers. In fact, when I meet a lot of small business people who say, I, I ask, you know, what marketing are you doing? And they say word of mouth. What that means is I'm not marketing at all. I'm just hoping for the best from my customers. And five years ago, ten years ago, that was awesome. It worked really well. But then when times are hard, um, it it's less effective and it's bringing in less business, so we really want to amp that up as well. And social media does that beautifully. So take a look at these stats. 71% of people are more likely to buy if they are referred. And 7% are more likely to buy if they are not referred. If they've never heard from you before, they don't have any connection to you. So we really want to build those connections and we want to build those referrals as well. So which channels, which social media sites uh, and ways to communicate with people are going to be best for you? This statistic still blows people's minds. Some people want to say that email marketing is dead because social media is taking over. Not true. Those who are tracking the statistics and keeping up with things know that email is still the most effective way to market. 50% of your contacts want to hear from you on email. Caveat, if you're providing great content, right? And then uh, there's the percentage for Facebook. It's a little more than 25%, and the red is the, the percentage for Twitter. So email is still the preferred way for people to contact, to keep in contact with you. So social media works better in conjunction with email. Now, when you're doing your email marketing, then you always want to cross-pollinate. You want to send people to your social media sites on your email. And on your social media sites, you want to send people to your email list. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So which site is right for my business? I can tell you right now, email marketing is right for your business. <laughs> and I am biased. Yes, I am. But because the numbers show over and over and over again, marketers, professional marketers, huge survey done 
2013 said that they get a 67% ROI, return on investment from email marketing, and 12% from Facebook. So it's huge. Now, again, I'm talking about social media today. I just want to emphasize that the combination of the two is the most powerful way to keep in touch with your clients. So let's talk about Facebook first. So we're all familiar with Facebook in this room, and whether we use it for business or personal, I just want to drill down into some of the reasons why you really do want to have a business page on Facebook. There are 1 billion 100,000 people on Facebook. Holy cow, that's active users, that's not just accounts. And 522 million people log on every day. Okay, your customers are on Facebook, you've got to be on Facebook. And that's always the question, is where are my customers? And where are my leads? You've got to be where your leads are. So, they are on Facebook. And interestingly, and cool for us small business people, 60% of people on Facebook are over 25. Facebook is no longer high school land. In fact, the kids in high school are now abandoning Facebook because, ew, my parents are on it, right? It has now become more and more of an adult site. And that's good news for us. 38% of people on Facebook are parents, so if your target customer is a parent, Facebook is a great place to be as well. And interestingly, the over 65 demographic is growing like crazy because they want to track their grandkids, right? So let's take a look at what makes a good Facebook business page. And I want you to be thinking about your own page as we do this. The first thing you need is a cover photo. And that's obvious, right? You wouldn't leave this blank. But the cover photo really needs to communicate what your business is about. And I'll tell you, you will get more traffic if you change your cover photo regularly. Because your followers will get an update, so and so change their cover photo. Anything to get them to come back to your page, right? So change it every couple of months or, you know, a couple of times a year, just because it's one more way to reach out to people. Your profile photo or your avatar is the little thing that sits next to all of your posts. So if your company is known as a company, then your logo, or I love this, it's a racing t-shirt for a biking company, that makes a lot of sense. If your business is you, let's say you're a sales rep for a company and you have a business page for you in your company, then your picture needs to be there. My company is uh, essentially me. I am the face of my company. I have staff, but nobody knows my staff, right? So my avatar is me. Um, so you kind of want to make that decision what works best. And you don't want to change your avatar because that is your identity. It's like changing your phone number or your email address. Who the heck is that, right? You want it to be a recognizable and consistent thing. So really quickly, define yeah. avatar. Okay, the avatar is the little thing, that the little box picture that represents you on your Facebook posts. Okay. Thank you. And so um, this is, this next thing is the most ignored piece on social media. And every social media site you're on, this piece needs to be complete and robust. And that is the little tiny about section. How many of you have checked an about section on a business on Facebook? Everybody, right? You're researching a company or you want to know where they're located or anything, you go to that about section. So visually, Facebook doesn't pay a lot of attention to it, but all of us do in terms of business. So there's a, you know, you click on, you've got a little bit of information on the page, but then you click on about, and that's where you get all the information. This is where you get to talk about your business, do some really great copy on what you do, and uh, also include your resume, perhaps, or at least how your expertise adds to your business. You can do history and all that kind of stuff. So be sure that that is filled out. It takes about a half an hour on Facebook, maybe less. It takes an hour on LinkedIn. Do it anyway. <laughs> That's really important. Apps and tabs on Facebook. So you always have, um, there's a couple that are always there. Photos are always there. You can't change that. Um, number of likes may show up. You know, they don't have to. This little button says there are more apps to look at. 
than what are up here. So you may have 5 or 10 or 15 apps here. Notice this one right here. I don't know if you can see it really well. It says join our list. Constant Contact actually generates this app for you. <coughs> and so it links to um, your email registration. And then you can do Facebook posts occasionally on join my list. Right? So that you're again cross-pollinating. You want people who follow your business to move to your email list. Uh, and timeline, then that's where all the posts go and we're really familiar with that. This is the posts you make and this is the posts that other people who are following you make on your page. So you can also post on your page as, you know, from your own, your personal page. You can post as, I can post as Lisa Smith and not as 7 Touch Marketing. I can post as Lisa Smith but it'll show up over here. If I want to show up over here, I need to post as 7 Touch Marketing. Okay? I'm not really getting into technical today. That's about the extent of my technical teaching right there. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then, of course, your posts. We'll talk about that. Okay, so tips for your business page. These things are really important. This is what makes Facebook successful for your business. Having a page is not enough. Making random posts is not enough. First of all, relevant content. And the question is relevant to what or to who? Who should it be relevant to? Your audience. Yes, your audience. Um, uh, what's his name? Myers. The guy, <laughs> I can't believe I forget this. The guy who wrote the email, right? The first thing he says in his book, what's his name, Heidi? Ah, anyway, you all know what it is. So the first thing he says in his book is what you have to say does not matter. What, in other words, what you think doesn't matter. What you want to say doesn't matter. It's what your audience wants to hear. That's what matters. So be sure that you're always providing comments, photos, and videos that your audience is interested in. So let's say your business is fly fishing tours around the world, but you happen to know through research and conversation and all that that your clientele is also interested in hunting. So then you will also post occasionally some stuff about hunting, right? Because that's what your, uh, your target customer cares about. Maybe your target customer also cares about gardening. Maybe they also care about um, the local economy. Maybe they also care about, okay, so this is in addition to your own business. And what that does is it gives you a following. It's like, oh my gosh, they know me. And it's not just business and it's not just promotion. Have fun. This is the social in social media. So is giving advertisements all the time social? No, I see heads shaking. I don't hear any voices, but lots of heads shaking. No. So absolutely not. You would not go to the neighborhood party and talk to every single person about your business. Now, if they came into your business, and this is a neighbor, you would talk a little bit about your personal lives, and then you would get down to business. So you're going to be a real person. Uh, your company is going to have a personality to it. I'll show you some great examples of that in a minute. Um, you're going to engage with all your likes and comments. So whenever somebody likes a post of yours, be sure to at least like their comment. Or rather, if they comment on a post of yours, like their comment or reply to it. So that you're engaging. They see you are not just a machine posting, 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 but you are real people. Um, use your Facebook page as an alternate landing page to your website. Now, I know a lot of small businesses are either under construction with their website or under remodeling on their website uh, or, you know, just don't have that website up yet. You can use your Facebook page as an alternate landing page for people to go to to see who you are. Um, I don't recommend that completely. I don't think you should skip a website, but it is an alternate place. Um, and then be sure to add that email sign-up form that I, that I showed you so that you can cross-pollinate and send them to your email thing. Now, the number one key to success on Facebook is images. When you're scanning through your inbox, do you look at images or at posts that don't have images? Not as likely unless it's like from your mom, right? So if you have a video on your post, you're likely to get 100% more engagement than if you don't have an image at all. That's a good stuff. Videos really, really work. Now, even better than videos is a picture. 
which is great. So I'm always on Google Images or iClipArt or any of those image sites where I can lift uh, or, or buy an image that will get attention. So even if I'm saying something funny or whatever, I, I capture an image that goes with it to get more engagement, more attention. And then a post with a photo album gets 180% more engagement. The thing about a photo album that works on business pages is telling a visual story. That's what works really well. That's why photo albums are popular. So do you want seven versions of the same team photo? No. You want the story of something, okay? Um, and that's, that really is awesome. Uh, a lot of businesses do a before and after or a before, during, and after. Uh, one of my friends has a construction remodeling company, and he did a three-minute fast, um, what is it called, speed, speed up, sped up, what is that called? <laughs> yeah, accelerated video, like stop motion kind of video of demo demolishing a kitchen. It was hilarious. So it started with all the appliances and cabinets and everything, and they started tearing out walls, and they tore out the cabinets, and they broke them all down, and they tore out the ceiling. I mean, they gutted that thing, and in about three minutes, you saw the whole process. It was really cool. What a great way to just get people to engage. Now, the other thing to remember about social media is that 38% of people, and I believe this number is rising daily, check Facebook on their phones. Right? So long posts do not work. So those of you who are keeping a diary on Facebook, stop it! <laughs> and if, you, if your post has to say read more, um, people are not going to click read more unless they know you personally, right? So business posts, short, short, short. Okay, let's talk about how Facebook can help your business. So here's an example of a business. This is the Belleville Farmers Market, and I want to go to this market because I have seen their various cover photos. I actually follow them now. Um, and they are always so intriguing, so delicious, so inspiring. Look how clean and neat and, and wonderful that is. And so um, they're very successful on Facebook. So the first thing you want to do with your Facebook pages, well, not necessarily the first thing, but you do want to drive traffic to your website. And they have an interesting little thing right here. They have actually purchased a storefront app. Um, that's not a main part of Facebook, but it's an addition that you can, um, you can add, obviously. And you click on that, and it shows an online store for Interestingly enough, their, some of their products, even though they're a farmer's market, you want to show personality. And take a look at a couple of these examples. Oh, let me go to this one first. This is just a picture of fruit crate, crates, and it says, it's 2 a.m., do you know where your fruit is? <laughs> I love that. It's kind of random, but it's awesome. Yeah, and it shows personality. Here's another thing you post that shows personality. It's spring. We are so excited we wet our pants. Plants. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we we'll just wait to see. So I love that post. I don't even know if this sign belongs to the farmer's market. It could be just something they saw on the road. And it's funny, and it kind of relates to their target audience, who probably likes to garden or is, you know, values the, the fresh. And then the next thing is engagement. The whole purpose of your posts is to get engagement. When people engage with your business, they are more likely to buy from your business. So here's an example of the engagement they got from this post. And they got 260 people liking it, 63 shares, which means they shared it on their own page or they sent it to someone individually. And so, for example, LOL, love the sign too. You know, some of our comments are kind of random, but it's awesome and cute, and we love the sign, and funny, and good one, and love it. It's just that people are enjoying it so much, they do give feedback on posts. And I will tell you that funny per, um, performs really well almost all the time. Um, angry cat memes does not perform very well, okay? <laughs> a meme is a picture that you put words on top of, right? You know, I called it a meme. A meme. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was called. A meme. It's a meme. Okay, so you always want engagement. So this is where Facebook gets kind of fun, is you post something and then you look to see what the engagement was. So you're always experimenting with what works and what doesn't work. 
So it's great. Um, Facebook, of course, can increase your visibility, and it's also where you can get reviews. So if someone has a great experience in your business and they say to you, oh my gosh, I am so happy, you can ask them, would you please post that on Facebook? Would you please give me a review on Yelp? I've had amazing customer service experiences, um, like a tie, I, I blew a tire when I was out of town. I needed a specific brand because I had just gotten four new tires, so I needed it to match. The tire store, and <laughs> this is so funny, the, I was at Sonic Drive-In when I got my flat tire. And so I'm sitting in the parking lot going, ah. a, a car drives up next to me in the next stall, gets out, he's got this tire company logo on his shirt, he says, can I help you? I'm like, yes! So he took me to his store, and they did not have the tire um, in any of their local stores. So his manager got on the online and looked for the tire store that had my tire and sent me to a different business. Holy cow. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. I said, what can I do for you? This is so kind. And he said, just leave a review on Yelp. And I was happy to do it. And uh, I posted it on Facebook as well. So that's the kind of thing you can actually ask your customers to spread the word on all of on the uh, social media sites. So let's talk about Twitter for a minute. Twitter has a robust following also. 288 million people are actively on Twitter. That's a lot of people. 88% of them follow at least one brand. So when I first heard about Twitter, I was sitting in Arby's. Okay, I eat lots of fast food because I travel so much. I was sitting in Arby's and I was like, what the heck with this Twitter thing? So I got onto Arby's Twitter account and I was like, everybody's posting about their sandwich. It was weird. <laughs> now maybe you're a fan of Arby's, that's awesome. But, um, you've, but people follow brands that they like. No matter what they are, they follow them. Now, demographics of Twitter are still younger. Um, also, urban is more popular in uh, more urban and bigger areas than it is in smaller areas. So you kind of have to decide what your demographic, what your target customer uses. Um, and the best way to do that is through a survey. And you can do surveys and polls on Facebook, or you can create a more robust one in constant contact, as I said, and email it to your list and post it on Facebook and on Twitter and on LinkedIn and find out what sites your customers are using. That's the most important thing. So tips for using Twitter. Here is the big secret about Twitter. It's the hashtag, and as we know, the hashtag, Twitter is all about the hashtag. Now Facebook recently said, you can use hashtags on Facebook. So people do, hashtag dumbest thing I ever did. Hashtag my kids are so cute. These don't mean anything at all. Okay. What a hashtag means is this. Let's say you're in a convention, and the main convention hall has 588 million people in it, and you want to connect with a specific demographic. You want to connect with small business owners. You want to connect with bikers. You want to connect with gardeners. And around this big, huge hall are breakout rooms, and each room has a title at the top. Hashtag gardening. Hashtag local small business. Hashtag your city um, businesses. And so you go to that room, and everyone in that room is talking about your stuff, not your business, but the content, the, the kinds of information that you have to offer. That's where you need to be on Twitter is in those hashtag groups. How do you find them? You go to the search bar and you do hashtag whatever. Hashtag email marketing would be mine, one of mine. And so you just see if there's a big group. You look for bigger numbers if you're what a you go to what? search bar in Twitter. You go to the search bar in Twitter to find uh, what your topic is. And you can narrow it down. I can do hashtag um, bend or Oregon small businesses and see if there's anybody active there. And if there's not, then I'm not going to use that hashtag. I'm going to explore until I find some that people are active in. So when you make up your own hashtag, what that means is you're talking to yourself. 
You <laughs> might as well be talking in the mirror. So you've got to find those hashtag groups that apply that where people hang out. Okay, that's the big secret about Twitter. That's the big key. So you want to post several times a day on Twitter to make traction. So the life cycle is a big deal. The life cycle of cycle. The life cycle of a Facebook post is about nine hours. In other words, if it's posted more than nine hours ago, nobody's going to see it. But the life cycle of a Twitter post is 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, no one will see your post, which is why you can post many times a day on Twitter. It's less annoying if you post a couple of different things during that day, so you may repost the same post two or three times, but not every time. Um, but that's something to keep in mind. So Twitter at least once a day, um, more times. Uh, my friend who is a social media um, um, provider, she does people's social media, she posts, what she posts seven to twelve times a day to keep that Twitter activity going to grow your business in Twitter. Does she they, use like Hootsuite or something or does she actually... She actually does the posts and that wow. is what she does for a living is you know, do people's social media. Wow. I'll talk about Hootsuite in a minute. So this is if you want to grow your business on Twitter. Now if Twitter is just some place that you want to be also, post once a day, twice a day, and you're probably okay. Alright? So um, you can also, what, what you do in content is you share links. Twitter posts are all about links. So, uh, and Twitter has this great um, service where they will now shorten your URL for you. So like if I post about one of my seminars and the link is 35 characters long, in Twitter I only have 140 characters total, so I want that link to be shortened. Um, Bitly.com, um, um, tinyurl.com uh, also do that, but owly.com is when Twitter has actually shortened it for you. So when you see an owly um, link, that's what that means. You can also ask for feedback. So you do want engagement as well on Twitter. You can tweet a survey. Find out who's on there and find out who's responding. You can send direct messages and you can certainly retweet content. So one of my favorite things to do in Twitter is to not make up my own posts all the time, <laughs> but to retweet other people's posts that I'm following. So on Twitter, follow experts in your field who are not competition, obviously. So I follow the big players, the big, huge email providers who I would never compete with because uh, I focus on very small businesses. So I follow a lot of them and when they post a great article, I retweet it for my followers. So that saves you a lot of time as well and you're learning in the process. Let's talk about LinkedIn now. Every professional person needs to be on LinkedIn, period but you don't have to be necessarily very active there. But you have to be there. 83% of B2B marketers are using LinkedIn. B2B means business to business. So if your clientele is business or business people, you need to be active in LinkedIn. That's probably where you will find them. 33% of them are nonprofits. 52% are associations. So if that's part of your target audience, be active on LinkedIn. 76% of people on LinkedIn use it to research companies. So if I want to know about your company, Melanie, I'm going to go to LinkedIn. I'm going to check out your resume, and I'm going to check out your company's um, resume, basically. I'm going to see what's really up. This is where professionals go for professional information. Now LinkedIn started as a resume service basically, right? It was post your resume here and get a job. And they definitely still have that, but where it really is, is where you go to see if someone is legit and established. And what kind of experience they have, and what kinds of people, who, uh, what kinds of things people are recommending you for. Whether people have faith in your skills in certain areas. So here are some tips on using LinkedIn. Always be professional. This is not where you post pictures of you and your dog on a hike. This is not where you say funny things about what your kid said. This is strictly professional. 
Find individuals that you know professionally. So when I joined LinkedIn, I went to all the jobs I've had in the past. In fact, I even found a Franklin Covey alum group on on LinkedIn, which is really fun, to reconnect with all my colleagues from the past. And anyone I have ever worked with professionally, I want to be connected to on LinkedIn. And then they get to know that I've started my own business. You know, I had lots of corporate years. So they're now, now getting to know that I've started my own business and what I'm doing and they give me support. They definitely give me a lot of support. You also want to join groups. Groups are the big secret of success in social media, um, especially um, Facebook and LinkedIn. That's where I use groups a lot. So again, you go to the search bar in LinkedIn and you search for groups about I would search email marketing, I would search groups about Facebook, groups about Twitter, etc. And in those groups, I am going to have like professional networking, I'm going to learn more about my profession, and I am also going to promote my business. Now you have to watch, some groups have rules where you cannot promote, it's only for professional Q&A kind of, you know, sharing of knowledge. Um, but some groups allow you to promote. So I promote my events on some LinkedIn groups and I just post advice about email marketing in some of my groups. Small business in my local area, I definitely post uh, advice in there because I do live seminars in my city. Um, and the way that groups work, this is so awesome, is you post yours to a group that has 500 people in it and now all of a sudden your, your post has gone out of your own connections and to 500 more people. And then if one of them reposts your link, then it goes to another 500 people. That's the exponential power of social media. And groups, I have found, get the best results from that. You will spread your word more and then you get people liking your page who you've never heard of, your Facebook page, you get people asking you questions, all kinds of things. Um, definitely participate in discussions and whether they're discussions on your own post or on another post. So for example, um, I don't have a degree in marketing or in email, I have a degree in um, training basically, in uh, improving uh, adult education in the workplace. And so, um, I, you know, as I said, I'm self-taught. So I'm on this email marketing group, and somebody posted a question, and it was like the most basic question. And I thought, I just ignored it. Everybody knows the answer to that question. Somebody else is going to answer it. Uh, a day later, that post was still up on that group, and no one had replied. So I replied. I'm like, okay, you know, this is what I think, and this is what I found. I got all kinds of comments. Great comment, Lisa. Oh, I love that insight. Thank you so much. I was like, crap, I know more than some of these other people. It was awesome. <laughs> you know, we all have things to contribute, even though we may not be the PhD in that field. We all have things to contribute. So it's really fun and it builds your credibility, which is huge, right? I think that's a good point is that we make a lot of assumptions that people know as much as we do when yes. it comes to this stuff and people really don't you know I yep. mean especially when you're talking about all these platforms that have come on the scene since really 2007 was when I started using LinkedIn yep. so we're talking seven years and this blitz of social media platforms who you know that Unless someone's using it for business, it's hard to keep up. And even when you're using it for business, it changes every day. Yep. So there's always something to learn, right? And there are people who uh, uh, are in those groups who are experts, and there are people who are novices. And you build your reputation by contributing. You can also post articles and tips and links to your emails. This is a great way to do that. Event invitations. Um, I think on LinkedIn you can do that. Yes, you can. Yeah. Can so you say that again, post articles. post articles and tips and event invitations. So if you join, a, if you belong to a local group and you're having a local event, that totally works. If you're having an online event like this one, you can post it all over the place. You know, groups that are national and even international to get people to see your online event. Um, and definitely use LinkedIn as a way to drive subscribers to your email list as well. 
that can be in individual posts um, so that every once in a while you're doing a you know sign up for my page and get a free something that works best um, to get people to join your list however LinkedIn, as with any social media, but especially LinkedIn, is not a place to promote heavily. They will not tolerate it. People will unfollow you. Groups will kick you out because you're too much promoting, too much self, too much buy my stuff, too much attend my events. Okay? So this is really a professional networking site. That's what it's best for. Let's talk about Pinterest. Now, Pinterest, you know, is a time sucker, right? It's more than Facebook. You get lost in all the things that you're interested in. Here's the secret to Pinterest. If you've never been on Pinterest before, or if you just went to the site once and you were like, what the heck is this? All right, I'm building a new house. So in the old days, I would have a bulletin board with just covered with pictures of all the things for my house, right? It would have a nice frame around it, and it would have all these magazine pictures and snapshots of things that I was interested in. So that's what Pinterest is. It's your new bulletin board. Um, in my uh, world, if I was interested in home building or my new house, and also on quilting. So Sisters Oregon is known for the world's largest quilt show, outdoor quilt show in the world. We had like 20,000 people come in one day to visit our little 2,000 person town. It's awesome. Anyway, so let's say I have a board about quilting and I'm going to ca capture pictures from about quilting and I'm going to look on other people's bullet boards. So every board in Pinterest simply represents another category of interest. All right. Let's take a look at Pinterest. 10,400,000 users. 21% of them purchased something that they saw on Pinterest. And actually, I just heard that stat is at 75 million. Oh, okay. yeah, these change so often. Yeah. I can't possibly it's, keep it's up. It's exploded since 2012. It's Definitely. exploded exponentially. Definitely, yeah. yeah. In fact, most of them are growing. Um, uh, some of them are fading a little bit, but the big players are still growing. <clears throat> If you have a product that people can see, you got to be on Pinterest. Now, I sell training on email and social media marketing. I don't play in Pinterest for business. Actually, I have a page for my videos because um, I, I do a video blog every couple of weeks, and uh, it's called The Three Minute Marketer. And if you subscribe to my list, you'll get it. Um, and so I post my videos on there. You can even have a board of your videos. Uh, but I do not post email stuff. I mean, that would be boring. Yeah, and, well, <laughs> Constant Contact actually has a Pinterest page, and it's full of infographics. And personally, I'm a little up to here with infographics that say too much, so you can't even figure out what it's saying. So, and I'm not going to create infographics. So I just don't use this. So you decide whether your business can um, would benefit from Pinterest. Right? So I didn't do this for business, but I did a top 10 things you need to do to your house before you put it on the market to sell it. And it was it was a post that I really did out of frustration on just on my blog. And it's been repinned over 150 times, and literally every day I get notifications. And I just laugh. I'm like, why didn't I sell something? You know? Yes. <laughs> But I didn't, you know, because yes. I didn't think about it. I just did. I just threw it up there. So you never know what's going to end up. You don't. You, you know, never know. I have a chocolate board. It's very popular among people I've never heard of. Um, I have. I post. I posted a picture from Howes actually as H O U Z Z, which is another time sucker if you're interested mm -hmm. in architecture, design, or building. And I posted a picture from Howes on my Pinterest board, and it has been shared over a hundred times. And it's like, oh my gosh, that one, out of all the things I posted, that one was so popular. So, 33% of all women, all women in the U.S. are on Pinterest. Pinterest is a chick site. <laughs> if your target customer is a woman, you need to be on Pinterest. 
Now, I was uh, working with a company, a gal from a, a Wild Bird Tours company, and she didn't think she had anything to offer on Pinterest because she doesn't have a product to sell. Oh, so not true. So we came up with all kinds of things that she could post on Pinterest, whether it's a close-up of an unusual bird, whether it's a, a, a destination photo of where their next tour is, whether it's a picture of that photo where they're going on the next tour and a link to, that's the sales page for that, or you know the information on their website, so forth. She can totally use Pinterest because it's an experience that she sells. She sells a visual experience that's totally um, uh, appropriate for Pinterest. So here is, when I logged into Pinterest one day, this is what I saw. So you can tell what I am interested in based on my boards and based on what I have pinned onto my boards because of what comes up. So it's very customized. So I get chocolate treats because I have a chocolate board. I get, oh that's weird, I get a winter work outfits because I have a board for work outfits. I get professional outfits. I get baked zucchini because I have a board for what is it's called non-chocolate food. <laughs> but my chocolate board is called chocolate, the pinnacle of the food pyramid. <laughs> anyway, so that's a little bit of the personality that you will see on my Facebook page as well. I post about chocolate. Um, and pillows, so you see kind of what I'm interested in just when you when you get on the page. So create a business page for, uh, create a Pinterest business page, a page for your business, and set up several boards that relate to your business there. So here's my Pinterest page. Uh, as I said, chocolate, decorating, food, clothing, um, and Lisa as marketing consultant. That's where you can click on it and see my videos. So that links directly to my YouTube page where you can then become a follower. Okay. Um, pin your content and link to your website, like I just mentioned. Pin others' content. So if I do see an infographic on constant contacts boards that I like, I'm going to repin it onto my own, okay, as uh, on the board about being marketing consultant. Um, and share interesting images related to your business, of course, right? Um, so if you uh, get a beauty shot of your newest product, right? Um, uh, if you get a some um, before and after pictures, you can do those on Pinterest, all kinds of things, and ask people to share your pins. Now the other thing that I don't have on this list is keywords. Each post needs to have keywords in it. So I was teaching a group of artists and I put in the keyword fine art and every single pin that came up had fine art in the description. So the question is what words are my customers searching on Pinterest to look at? And so if I searched pillows this one will definitely come up. If I search chocolate this is one of the ones that is going to come up. So you would never want to post a, uh, a chocolate dessert without saying chocolate in it if you are in the chocolate business, right? So you always want to key your keyword your, your pins. All right, so here's an example of a company that used Pinterest really well. They are a t-shirt company. So what do they pin? Not the whole t-shirt, they pin the graphic that's on the t-shirt. And then when you click on it, and interestingly, it's a Facebook page. It takes you to their Facebook um, marketplace. And then you can add it to your cart right there. They drive a ton of business from their Pinterest board. Interesting. From Pinterest to Facebook? And yeah, isn't that odd? Purchase? Interesting. It was facebook.com slash. You could do it just as easily to your website store. Let's talk about Instagram. Now, Instagram is a mobile um, um, site. So if you go on Instagram.com on your computer, it's really late, you can't do much. But if you go on your phone, that's where it's where it's been built to look. So 100 million people are using Instagram. 40 million images are uploaded every day. Instagram is all images. That's what it's all about. So some keys to using it. First of all, tell a story visually. Stories are the most popular in Instagram. So one picture of your dog on the beach is not nearly as compelling as several pictures 
Um, even if you take the, you know, like eight frames per minute or something like that, where you see the dog running down the beach, again, if that story is relevant to your audience, but you can tell the story visually. If new furniture arrives and you're setting it up on your, you know, floor for your furniture store, that would be a cool thing to see how they put together the furniture and add the accessories and, you know, put down the rug and choose the uh, coffee table and things like that. Um, beautiful imagery or humor always plays well on Instagram. And your account name should be the same as your Twitter handle because Instagram and Twitter talk to each other. They play well in the sandbox. So my, um, my Twitter name is Lisa Smith 7 Touch. And so my Instagram name would be the same. I don't play in Instagram for business because my business, I don't have a lot of pictures other than like snapshots of people. <laughs> so I choose not to spend my time there. And that's one of the biggest questions in social media is where is my time best spent? And for my business, it's not Instagram, but for many businesses, it is. Um, and use hashtags because, again, for your keywords in Instagram, because it plays well with Twitter, use hashtags before your posts and keywords. And on Instagram, post one to two times a day, and that's mine. That's plenty. Here's an example of a wine shop that uses Instagram. This is interesting, isn't it? Because they're not what you would think traditionally using Instagram, but they use it very well. They use it for engagement and customer service. So you can see along with their Instagram posts, they get engagement just like we've seen with other social media. Uh, like you can use it for promotion as well. So this, let me go back. This wine shop has a mascot. You see the personality there. It's random. It's a monkey. What does a monkey have to do with wine? Nothing that I know of. I don't know. But they call it Chimberto. That's their name, the name of their mascot. So you're seeing personality and you're also seeing beautiful wine. So somebody actually posted with this photo of a mascot, do you have wine tastings anywhere? It's not even related to the photo. But they saw the photo, they felt the personality, and they were like, I want to go to a wine tasting there. Because of the personality. Interesting. And so then they reply, yes, we do. Just follow our Facebook page, and you'll find out all the details. Or you can see a link on our Instagram profile. What is missing in this post? A link. Yes. You always want to make it easy for people to do what you're asking them to do. I can't believe that they missed that. You know, So there's always something, think about what action do I want people to take and then allow them to take it with the fewest, the least effort possible. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do on Instagram today. Let's talk about Google+. The joke used to be that if you're on Google+, you're an employee of Google. Uh, it is finally growing. It's taking a slow approach to growth, but it is gaining huge ground. And fa as Facebook becomes more and more difficult for businesses, makes it more difficult for businesses, Google Plus becomes more popular because they are actually business friendly more than Facebook. 343 million users on Facebook, and again, that number goes up all Google the time, Plus. daily. I said Facebook. I'm Google Plus, yes. Five billion times the Google Plus one button is clicked per day. That's a lot of clicks on Google Plus. So here are some tips for using it. Share your posts publicly. Um, so in Google Plus, you can organize your posts and your friends, followers, whatever you call them, into circles. So I have a family circle, right? And I may have an email circle. I may have a Bend, Oregon circle. Bend is the closest big city to sisters. I may have a, okay, let's use quilting again, circle. And I'm going to organize my contacts, my friends, my, my followers according to where they belong. Okay, some of them are going to belong to more than one. But when you make a business post, um, you're going to choose which ones relate. So I'm definitely going to post on email and then circles and family circle when I make a business post. I'm not going to post to my quilting friends. 
because they, they don't want to hear from that, about that. So you can choose wisely, but some of your posts about your business you want to share publicly. Every once in a while, people even who are not connected to your business probably want to hear what you are doing. And so that's totally fine. It's just not all business posts on all your circles. So you organize your followers by circles and you share targeted messages strategically. So I'm also going to have a you know Twitter education group and I'm going to have uh, a Utah, I train in Utah and seminar uh, and, and in Oregon. I teach seminars in Utah. So I'm going to have Utah small businesses and Oregon small businesses and so forth and, and I'm going to share those messages strategically. So when I'm sending, I'm, when I'm uh, promoting an event in Utah, I will promote it to this group and not to all the groups. Um, and try a hangout, a Google what we're hangout. Doing right now. This is what we're doing right now. This is a Google hangout. And so it's a great way to, to share webinars and events and all kinds of things online so that um, people who can't be there on person also get to have the great experience. It's also good for team meetings and all kinds of things like that. And Google Plus plays nicely with Google. If you want your posts to come up in Google search, Google Plus is the place to be. And so you will want to focus on keywords. And if you don't know how to find keywords, ask your web guy. Uh, but that's really important to use keywords so that it comes up on Google search. Your Facebook pages will also, sometimes your Facebook posts, sometimes will come up on, on Google as well. But, but Google Plus is the place to be for um, search engine results. So let's talk about generally how to begin in social media. First of all, as I said earlier, complete your profiles completely. <laughs> don't leave any spaces blank. Now, in your professional part. Now, you don't have to say what movies you like and what music you like and all that. That's on your personal page anyway in Facebook. But you do want to fill up all of the spaces for your business. Take the time to do it, and then it's done forever. Every once in a while, you might want to update a sentence or a paragraph or something. Um, grow your following with your email list. Always on your emails. Post links to where you are online. Add starter content. So let's say you are just starting on Facebook, and then you start inviting all your friends and colleagues to your Facebook page. And when I go on your Facebook page, what I see is nothing. <laughs> you have a cover photo, your profile picture, you have the About section done, and your first post. And then there's nothing. And you have like three likes. Am I intrigued, interested? Do I want to like your page? Not unless I'm a personal friend, <laughs> honestly. So you want to build your content. And in Facebook, this is awesome, you can post, you can predate posts. You can schedule posts to show up as though they were posted last week and the week before and the week before. The other way to do it is to actually post for two weeks every day and then announce your Facebook page. Um, and that gives you time to gather more likes from your personal friends and family and you know wherever you can get them existing customers. So either way, be sure and populate your page before you announce that you're on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. The Twitter page is easy to populate because you just follow some people and then their posts will also show up on your page. So that's easy to do. Oh, 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 let me talk about reusing content. Well, that's one of the keys, but I'm going to show you a slide about that in a few minutes. Okay, so look professional. I think I already covered that. Make sure that it shows your brand. So this page is, um, is great because they have filled out the About section. They've got a cute profile picture. Their, pro, their uh, cover photo is very engaging. Um, and then they also have the brand on their Twitter page. So everything needs to match your brand. So with logos and colors and all that kind of thing. And see how their tweets, their, their logo shows up on all of their tweets. So people know who's, who's posting that comment. Here's a great way to use your email to kickstart your Facebook or whatever social media campaigns you want to do. Um, is Constant Contact actually provides you with these templates that are already done. 
So all I need to do is add my logo, add my picture, my profile photo, or whatever, and customize the content, hit send. So it's a five, ten minute process to announce to your list that you are now on whatever the site is. So they have these for Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, I think several of them. So announce your presence. Include standard links in every email. So here, like us on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. YouTube is also social media, by the way. If you want to know how to do something, you go to YouTube, right? Or you search Google, and YouTube comes up. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. You've got to be in pictures. <laughs> You've got to be on video, set up a YouTube channel, ask people how to, or Google, how to do videos. They're easy to upload. It's a great place to be. And then you can send people there for your videos. Um, and how-to videos are most popular on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> now let's talk about content. Uh, this is also puzzling for many people. What do I put in my posts? And we've talked about that a bit already. Information, tips, practical advice. I want you to think about what do you know that other people don't know? Just like that question on LinkedIn that I answered. What you know um, is because you eat, live, and breathe it. Um, and people who don't eat, live, and breathe it don't know most of what you know about your expertise. So feel free to share even things that you think everybody knows because everybody doesn't know them. Um, questions asked by your customers. Frequently asked questions. Questions they should be asking but they don't know enough to ask it. <laughs> that comes around a lot in tax time. I didn't even know I should know that, right? That's really great stuff. Things that people will follow you to learn. Um, links, links, links. They're big on social media. Use links to all kinds of different things. Um, and you will get more engagement. Constant Contact also provides a cool thing at the top of your newsletter. Now, I want you to ignore the newsletter itself because it's a really bad template and it says newsletter at the top. No, no, no. However, what I want you to pay attention to is this up at the top. It's called the share bar. And what that means is when you add that to your emails, people can just click the Facebook um, icon and it will share your email on their page. Woohoo! That's what we love. We want people to share our stuff. So it makes it really easy to do that. Um, one way or another, make sure people have the opportunity to share your stuff um, from your email too. So here's another example of somebody's email. And the email uh, does not include the entire article. It includes a read more link, like you see right here. Now, so that's their email article. Let's take a look at how else they use it. So they also use it on a um, press release. They also use it on a Twitter post. They also use it on Facebook. So of course they're saying it slightly differently every time, but it's the same content. So spread your content, reuse it, recycle it. If you have ever written an article or even a paragraph about your expertise about your business, some information, then you have content to use. Go back through your old blogs and use those as Facebook posts, a portion of them, you know, like two sentences from that blog. Awesome content, and it's easier to do than coming up with new posts all the time. Let's talk about some do's and don'ts. Do be the expert. This is not all about promotion. This is about sharing your information. Why would we share our expertise? Why not keep it close and make people pay for it? Because sharing your expertise builds confidence and trust. And if you know that thing, then you probably know all the things that I need your services for. So don't be afraid to give away content. Focusing on the content is important. And then providing useful information, and again, the better you know your target customer, the more useful your information will be. Filter out the noise. Here is my least favorite post of all time. Good morning, Facebook. Nothing. He's like, really? Do you think we missed you? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh my gosh, really? So I actually unfriended that person because I was so tired of seeing these self-absorbed, 
um, I'm the life of the party kind of posts. They were irrelevant to everyone and they did not contribute to any conversation. That's noise on Facebook. Um, show your personality for sure, for sure. Here's my rule of thumb. 80% um, okay this is on my business page. On my business page I post 80% business and 20% personal. So they get a sense of who I am and every once in a while they'll you know see pictures of my son or see a picture of my vacation and even more strategically if I can point out you know, I was in Hawaii and I take a snapshot of some good marketing that I saw. Then it's strategic. Oh, you know that I'm in Hawaii, but it still relates to business. So that's a great example of strategic posting. On my personal page, it's exactly the opposite. 80% uh, personal, but then I throw in 20% business so that I can get my friends to migrate to my business page. So that's a great rule of thumb to use. Post more content than offers. Um, uh, social media is not a flyer. It's not a sales ad. It's not the coupon book. This is not an advertising platform. So you can post offers and coupons and event invitations and so forth, but don't do it all the time. Keep it, keep it down. And then posting regularly. On Facebook to gain traction, you need to post probably one to two, even three times a day. Depending on the platform, you never want to monopolize the conversation. So if people's pages are seeing seven touch marketing, seven touch marketing, seven touch marketing, seven touch marketing, they're like, ah, enough already, right? So um, consider the conversation that's going on. But you do need to post at least once a day to gain traction on Facebook. Being there versus gaining traction, that's a strategic decision for your business. Here are some don'ts. And we probably are all aware of these because someone in our Facebook page has done this and it's annoying. So, as a reminder, don't pitch. This is not where you make a sales presentation. Do not overly self-promote. Again, it's like a cocktail party or a networking meeting. You would not sit down at the dinner table with all these colleagues and talk about your business the whole time and make offers and offers and offers. You would ask other people about their businesses. You would listen. You would contribute to the conversation. Um, never offer incentives to leave your business re reviews of your business um, or sharing your posts. That's just that's just lame. That's desperate. You know, I'll pay you ten bucks to go out on a date with me, right? <laughs> That's just desperate. So um, it's okay to offer incentives for people to sign up for your email list. That is well accepted. Um, I will give you something valuable in return for your contact information, but you don't want to pay for reviews because then it's disingenuous. Um, don't stray. This again goes back to my 80-20 rule. Um, but particularly what you don't want to stray into is politics, um, religion, unless you're a po politician or a pastor, right? Um, uh, again, with personal pages, do whatever you want, but with your business page, you don't want to stray into things that will alienate people. Um, don't monopolize the conversation I already talked about, and number one, do not ignore comments. They've commented, they've started a conversation, you're not just going to walk away and ignore them, you want to engage. So, one of the greatest fears actually when social media started being used for business was what if somebody posts something negative? So I want to address that. But remember, you will get more positive comments than you will negative. So we also need to deal with the positive. It's our favorite thing. So they are an opportunity to spread the message. So always respond and say thank you, just like you would in person. Answer the questions. If people have a question, be sure and be on there. That's another reason to be on every day, to answer their questions in a timely manner. And then you can share the comments on other channels. So you can see, check out the great um, um, uh, question that was answered on my Facebook page, something like that, you can, and you can share it on other social media. And you consider rewarding positive posters, but not publicly. So this is an offline thing.
favor that you're doing for your customers. So they leave you a great review and you comment saying thank you so much. Um, direct message me with your um, um, email address or with your uh, mailing address and I would love to give you a little something. Or, you know. I'm sorry, I have a point with a client, but this is very, very, very informative. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. You're welcome. Have a good meeting. All right. Um, then let's talk about the negative, the great dreaded negative. Now, we all know there are just angry people out there who like to unleash their anonymous anger on somebody online. Um, but we can't dismiss them completely. Uh, but otherwise, other times you'll have legitimate complaints, and boy, these are valuable information, aren't they, for a business? If you're not getting any negative comments, and you're not hearing any, then you're not getting good feedback on your business, right? So always reach out to the customer. Um, be sure and always respond to a comment. It's better to respond to it than to remove it. It's better to respond to it than to remove the, the comment. So you want to respond um, so that everybody knows that you are addressing the issue. And always seek to satisfy a delight and never, 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 never defend. So this person, uh, uh, somewhat, Boloco is a uh, burrito shop in Massachusetts. And somebody posted, my burrito was dry cold. What the heck? Something like that, right? So they responded. Um, a, a couple of times, but this is one of the posts in the thread. Uh, direct message me your Boloco card number. We clearly haven't won you over yet. But that was not the beginning. That was not the first post, but they had a whole thread of things. The first thing they said was, oh my goodness, we weren't up to par that day. We'd like to make it up to you. Um, so they didn't say, well, we were short-staffed, and the, um, the tortilla supplier was late. You know, those are all defenses. And they do not, the customer doesn't care what background problems you're having. Your custom experience should be, should be, the background stuff should be invisible. So never defend, apologize, and make it right. And make sure the public knows that you are apologizing and that you're going to make it right. How you make it right does not have to be public. Should not even be public. On social media, you can get a huge amount of information about your business. So I want you to be monitoring. On Facebook, you should be, or rather on uh, just on the internet, you should be monitoring your brand. You should know where your brand is being mentioned, who's talking about it, and what they are saying. You also want to monitor similar companies. So monitor your competition, for sure, so that you know what they're doing. And then you're going to look at what they're doing that is successful, and you're going to learn from that and start adopting those same practices so that you are also being more successful on social media. You can definitely monitor categories, topics, and keywords. This is how you learn more about your industry. You see what other articles are out there and what people are interested in reading. And then experts and influencers, this is where you learn for yourself. So I monitor the big players. I get articles from them all the time so that I am constantly learning. That's a great way to come up with post ideas as well. There are a couple of tools that are useful for all that monitoring and the posting and stuff that you need to do. Right now, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to be on all six uh, places and a couple more that my friends are using, and I need to post 7 to 12 times a day on Twitter, on Twitter, on Twitter, on Twitter, and I need to post three times a day on Facebook and twice a day on Instagram, and oh my gosh, so overloaded. First of all, if you've got it down on one site, then add another site. So if you're feeling really good about your Facebook, then go to the next site that you think is going to be valuable for your business. Take them one at a time. Master it. Get it down to a routine. And then move to the next one. I actually tried starting big on all three at the same time. And I found I was spending more time on social media than anything else. <laughs> so I don't really recommend that. Uh, but there's a couple of tools to help you manage posting in various sites. And one of them is Hootsuite. Hootsuite is free. And uh, it will help you. You can schedule, you can do your posts and schedule them 
for a specific date and time and in all of the, some of the major, most of the major players on social media. So that saves you a ton of time. You can set your schedule once for the whole week and the posts are taken care of. The problem with Hootsuite is that people know when you have used Hootsuite. And some people take take uh, offense at that. Oh man, she's not really on Facebook, she's just automatically having it posted for And her. sometimes Facebook will like downgrade those posts. Yes, and they do. Yeah. Facebook does not let all of your followers see all of your posts, so they, uh, they filter it out based on all kinds of secret algorithms that nobody really knows, but one of the um, things that influences how many of your followers see your post is whether it was automatically posted by something else, by Hootsuite or by any of the other kind of scheduling providers. So um, that's the drawback. The, uh, the advantage is it's super time-saving and very efficient. So would you recommend maybe doing a mix where you would say, okay, I'm going to do four posts for Twitter from Hootsuite and then the rest I'll go in and, and do organically? Absolutely. Perfect strategy. So here's what you can do. You can have a content calendar for the whole month, actually, and one regular post gets put in every day. You can do that on Hootsuite, but then you want to add things in organically. So in the day, you're going to also take a picture and post it on Instagram. During the day, you're going to, you know, think of a quote or, or you know, explain a funny thing that happened on your pages live. So you have that support. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, Nutshell Mail is my favorite management tool. This does not schedule your posts ahead, but what it does is it keeps you updated on what's going on. So I get an email in my inbox, that's where emails come, I get an email every day that tells me what I posted yesterday and also the engagement that other people had. So if I got comments on my post, I see those comments in my inbox now I know I need to go to Facebook and reply to those comments. Now I get these emails every day. You can schedule them to come however often you want. Um, and so then I can go uh, like or comment here. It takes me right to Facebook and my inbox. So Constant okay. Contract has really learned how to integrate the social media piece. Exactly. Thank cool. you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is actually a Constant Contact um, um, service. It's free. You go to nutshellmail.com and you can download it and it's, it's awesome because you always know, even on a super busy day the next morning or whenever you want, you will find out what went on on social media. And here's the other way that I encourage you to monitor all those things, particularly your brand, any kind of articles that you would like to learn about, things like that. Google Alerts. Google.com slash alerts. Let me write that up here. Google.com slash alerts. This sweeps the web for the best results of anything you want to know about. So it's awesome for your brand. The search query might be um, um, my Acme business, <laughs> right? Whatever your business name is. Result type, and you can select everything or news or blogs or, or, or websites or anything. I do not want everything on email marketing. I want articles or blogs. That's what I'm looking for, so I select that. How often do you want to get an email with the best results on your search query? Depends on what you're doing it for, but I get them once a week. So when it's time to do a Facebook post or an, an email content, I'm going to look through those articles. And if I see something I like, I'm going to share that with my, um, with my followers. I want only the best results and delivered to this email address. This is awesome. When you are posting, you can share other people's content and there's no danger of uh, plagiarism. And here's how you do it. So I check my email uh, once a week on my Google Alerts on email marketing. And I check a few of the articles, because that's all I'm getting. And I'm looking for, obviously, non-competitors who have a great article that my followers might be interested in. So I go to the URL and I capture it. So it's the HTTP blah, 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 right? The URL. I copy and paste that. I put a little teaser sentence or two about why they should read that article. And then I put in the link. And that's it. It's so easy. This is content in 10 minutes or less. Awesome! So when I link to their website, do they care? 
absolutely they care. They're thrilled. Thank you for driving down our traffic to my website. It is not, it, it is totally a big favor that I'm giving in, and that's why I don't use competitors of, of information, right? Um, and I am providing my users with information that they would generally not think of searching Google for, right? So because I live, drink, and sleep this, uh, I am searching for things on Google that other people would not even think about searching for. But I'm, I then become the source of all my knowledge about email marketing, and people respect me, and they're like, I want to do this with her because she's so smart, she's so resourceful, she's so trustworthy, and so forth. Okay, so Google Alerts, one of my favorite tools. Let's talk about what you do next. <laughs> so the first thing is, you take a look at your social media presence, and you think about the one that you are most confident in. Um, and if you need to improve that one, based on what you've learned today, spend time on that one first. So if your Facebook page isn't complete, or your posts are kind of like random every couple of weeks, or heaven forbid, three months ago, then you want to spend your next the time in the next month or so building up your Facebook presence. Once you've got that one down, then choose another one, right? Um, the other thing you need to do is incorporate your social media presence with email. If you don't have email, that's a problem. So maybe you feel like this guy. I hope you can see this. I need help with the next step. Take a look at the size of the next step. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, sometimes that's how it feels. Social media is daunting. And oh my gosh, I haven't done an email in two years and so forth. So I want to help you with that. And the way I want to help you is by giving you a free gift. So by being here today, whether you're online or in person, I want to give you two months of constant contact email. Um, so this is a $30 value. This is not a free trial. This is a full-on, full-capability account. And it's worth $30. I pay for it out of pocket. I'm happy to do that for you because I am so confident in the power of email in combination with social media. So I want to give you a free account. Um, if you're already on Constant Contact, I hope you use it well, and I would love to help you use it better. Feel free to reach out to me. But if you don't have it, let me set you up with a free account for two months. What I need from you, if you're online, I need you to email me and I will take care of that for you. We'll get all the information we need and set it up for you. If you're here live, um, on the evaluation form, you will see a checkbox and that will take care of it. I will set it up for you. You will receive all the information you need to get your hands in and working on it. So that's my offer for you today. The reason I'm giving this to you, again, is because email is powerful with social media. And the best way to use social media is in conjunction with email. And the best way to use email is in conjunction with social media. So thank you so much for being here today. I hope you will engage with me. My Facebook page is 7 Touch Marketing, and um, I, you saw the other ones earlier. Um, and my email address is Lisa at 7-touchmarketing.com. And I'm almost going to run out of room on the board. There we go. Lisa at 7-touchmarketing.com. If you want to take advantage of this free two months of constant contact, please just email me and we will take care of it. I hope you will follow me on social media. Thank you so much for being here today. Take care.